Hi, I'm Tony Deering, and welcome to Lesson 2 on the Pathway to Better Brain Health. Here's the reality of dealing with mild cognitive impairment. There's no magic pill. There's no miracle cure, and I'll never tell you otherwise, except maybe for one possible exception. When it comes to cognitive decline, the closest thing we have to a miracle is exercise. But that's not according to me. That's according to the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges. In 2015, the Academy put out a report calling exercise a miracle cure. Susan Bailey, the chair of the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, said if physical activity was a drug, it would be classified as a wonder drug. The report went on to say regular exercise can prevent dementia, type 2 diabetes, some cancers, depression, heart disease, and other serious common conditions. In fact, it's said that exercise can reduce the chance of getting dementia or stroke by 30%. That's true for our health in general, and neurologists say that it's particularly true for anyone facing mild cognitive impairment. Dr. Rudolf Tanzi of the Harvard Medical School, one of the country's foremost Alzheimer's researchers, says there are at least three important ways that exercise protects cognition. First, it helps remove the pathology of dementia from the brain. Second, it helps stop inflammation, which he describes as a big part of the disease in the brain. And finally, he says, it actually induces the birth of new stem cells, which turn into nerve cells in the short-term memory area of the brain that's most affected by Alzheimer's. According to US News and World Report, a study found that seniors who got moderate to intense exercise retained more of their mental skills over the next five years versus older adults who got light exercise or none at all. On average, those less active seniors showed an extra 10 years of brain aging. So why don't people exercise? Actually, the answer is very simple. Most people hate exercise. They don't want to exercise and they won't do it. Only about 16% of adult Americans age 65 and older get the recommended amount of exercise each week, according to the CDC. So there's something really wrong here. Either Americans aren't getting the message or perhaps they're getting the wrong message. Dan Butner, a longevity expert and best-selling author, thinks it's the latter. Speaking at the Aspen Idea Festival last year, he said some pretty provocative things about public health policy in this country. Butner said, I hate to say it, this is a bit of a heresy, but exercise has been an unmitigated public health failure in this country. We've been pounding it and spending billions of dollars for the past 70 years trying to get people to exercise, yet the average American burns fewer than 100 calories a day engaged in exercise. Butner knows there's another way because he's seen it in action. For the past 14 years, he's been studying so-called blue zones, places in the world where people live remarkably long lives and have very low rates of dementia and other chronic diseases. He's identified a set of common lifestyle factors that keep these people incredibly healthy, and one of them is exercise, but not in the way we think about it. They don't go to the gym. They don't work out but they do stay physically active. Yet it's in a way that they're not even conscious of. For them, 
physical activity is grained in the way they live. In this mural from Sardinia, Italy, which is one of the blue zones, reflects that. This is their lifestyle. They garden, they work with their hands, and above all, they walk. As Butner says, if they do willful physical activity, it's almost always walking, something you can do until you're 90 or 100 years old. So yes, definitely you need to be physically active. But if you're not into exercise, that's fine. There are plenty of other ways you can get yourself up and moving around more often. Start with these simple approaches. Number one, deconvenience yourself a little bit. Park further from the door. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Put down the remote and get up from the couch every now and then. Number two, find a physical activity you enjoy so much that you'd do it even if it weren't good for you. You can get really high quality fitness from such activities as dancing or Zumba or gardening, nature photography, sailing, riding a horse. And number three, and this is the most important of all, walking. You simply cannot underestimate the brain health benefits of going out for a walk. The book Sharp Brains says, as little as three hours a week of brisk walking has been shown to halt or even reverse the brain atrophy, meaning the shrinkage, that starts in a person's 40s, especially in the regions responsible for memory and higher cognition. A recent study revealed how daily walking or movement can help maintain brain health and memory. It followed 387 women over 20 years, beginning when they were in their 40s and 50s. And here's what it found. The women who stayed physically active on a daily basis were less likely to experience memory loss in their 60s and 70s compared to those who were sedentary. Now that probably doesn't surprise you, but here's something that might. Because you wanna know who fared best of all? It wasn't the women who went to the gym or the distance runners. Instead, according to healthybrains.org, regular physical activity, like walking around the block on a daily basis, proved to be the most effective way to preserve brain health and deter age-related memory loss. Now that being said, we don't wanna discourage anyone from going to the gym or taking part in an exercise program. If you're into exercise, that's great. But here are a few things to consider. First, try a variety of exercises. You want your workout to include some aerobics, some strength training, and flexibility training. Ideally, you want to incorporate all of these elements into your exercise routines. How much physical activity do you need? The recommendation is to engage in moderate intensity activity for at least 150 minutes a week. Moderate intensity exercise is loosely defined as a level of activity that you can talk while you're doing it but not sing. Often, we're encouraged to get this physical activity in segments of 30 minutes a day, five days a week. But many older adults aren't interested in 30 minute workout sessions, and you don't have to be either. Doing physical activity in 10 minute stretches is fine. Just shoot for that 150 minutes over the course of the week. The other two points, have to do with making physical activity a habit. For someone who's been sedentary, the only thing harder than starting a fitness routine is keeping it going. Here are the two best ways to make it stick. The first rule is do what you love. It doesn't matter if we're talking about physical activity or eating healthier foods or cognitive stimulation 
forcing yourself into some form of drudgery because you think you're supposed to, or because it's quote unquote good for you, isn't the answer. Find a way to do it that you really enjoy and you'll look forward to. That's how you make transformational change and add to the richness and quality of your life while also giving yourself the best possible chance of slowing cognitive decline. The second secret of success is this. Buddy up. Whatever form of physical activity you decide to try, enlist a partner, a spouse, a relative, a friend. Research shows that walking or working out with someone else creates the greatest likelihood that you'll stay with it. So now, Let's recap. No medicine, treatment, or lifestyle change offers a greater benefit than physical activity does. It's the miracle you can perform on yourself. Shoot for 150 minutes a week, and doing it in 10-minute increments is fine. It can be exercise, but it doesn't have to be. Any form of moderate physical activity is good. And never underestimate the power of simply going out for a walk. Even modest amounts of walking have been proven to offer profound cognitive benefits. The two surest ways to make a physical activity a habit are to find something you love to do and find someone to do it with. Buddy up. And please remember, I always consult your doctor before beginning an exercise program. And when you begin, start slowly and gradually build frequency and duration. Congratulations, you've completed lesson two. We've now covered heart health and exercise. The final three lessons will address diet, sleep, and cognitive and social stimulation. I've created a worksheet that you can use to rate yourself on these various risk factors. You'll find it below. Scroll down and you'll also see a list of resources. If you want to save the information from this lesson so that you can review it again later, there's a sheet of fast facts that you can download or print out. As always, I want to remind you that this site is educational and is not intended as medical advice. It offers information about lifestyle choices that have been proven to help protect cognition. I always consult your doctor before making changes that can affect your health. So how about this lesson? Did it help you identify something you might want to work on? Is there anything that you want to know more about? Leave a comment or question in the comment field below or send me an email. If you know someone else who might benefit from this lesson, please forward it to them. And when you're ready, I invite you to continue on to lesson three. I'll see you there.